her. I answered the last one. It's not like that, you know. No, I know. <laughs> I think that is your subject. Yeah. No, that's yours. Uh, I, I, I will say this. The, um, the ground rules were questions about what we had taught, not <laughs> stuff we don't know. <laughs> uh, but go ahead and answer that for him, that's good. I think there were several parts in his question. Certainly, the Catholic Church, or rather the Pope, will play a major role, especially his present Pope, in being like the false prophet who will partner with the Antichrist. See, the Antichrist needs a false prophet who will do great signs and wonders. If he's going to make the world to worship the beast, worship is something that is religious. So it must be a religious man who will make to worship. If you look at the present scenario that's taking place in the world, Many Protestant leaders, Pentecost leaders, are now trying to make alliances with the Pope. This has never happened with the former Pope Benedict or with the other Pope John Paul, who was more charismatic than any of the Popes in the history of the Catholic Church, but only with this present one, Francis, who seemed to be like a friend to everybody. You know, last year, in the month of March, I was in uh, Tennessee, Nashville, for a conference among broadcasters. And I was sitting in the meeting and listening to one, uh, I, don't, I can't remember what the talk was all about, but suddenly the Holy Spirit began to show me this was before the Pope Francis was elected. So the Lord spoke to me who the next, the, some signs of who the next Pope is going to be. So I wrote it down all in my note. What are the characteristics he will have one by one by one. And when Pope Francis was elected, and, over, and after that, his works and what he has been doing, when I check with what I've written, they tell it straight to straight that this is the man that God spoke. And he certainly will be like the false prophet who will align with the Antichrist. So that answers one part of your question. What's the other part? The, um, the trumpet sounds that have been going on around the world that you actually have also in your video. I think it started, I think, in 2011, when we got all the sinkholes, etc. But has the Lord given you any revelations? What are those trumpet sounds? Are they, they're not the seven trumpets, I don't think, in Revelations, you know, but what are they heralding? Is it it's just the end times? Is that what's happening? You know? These are just some signs in the heavens that are taking place. Now, I don't have uh, more insight into that, but what I do know is these are signs. See, the scripture says there'll be sign in the heavens. You know, after... Um, we finish our conference in Israel in the month of June this year. We came back and I spent a few days in Singapore. And on July the 8th, I was sitting in a home and reading the newspaper at about 7.30 in the evening. Suddenly, I heard the sound of a shofar. And I, it was so distinct, so clear, very, very audible coming from far away place. Three times I heard the sound of the shofar being blown. So I thought that some Christians living nearby are blowing the shofar. That was a mistake I made. I should have come out of the house to see. And I just kind of brushed it away. A few days later, one of our viewers wrote me a mail saying that she, this is a young girl from southern India, and on July the 8th, about the same time, she heard the sound of a shofar being blown. When she wrote that, I thought, I suddenly remembered 
what I heard. So then I knew this was a supernatural sound. On that very day, Israel launched the war against Gaza. On July the 8th, they launched the war. Hmm. So then I understood, because when we were in Israel, I had a visitation from Michael, and he explained to me about the plans Michael and his angels had made to aid the Israeli defense forces how to save Israel. They, they already made a plan. And I saw all the chariot station all around Israel. Chariots and horses all over the mountains of Israel. That they were going to protect Israel and also help the Israeli army and its soldiers from great destruction. Yeah. So, because the sofa was sounded, they blow the shofar, signifying now the war will begin. So that part I know, but this sound of shofar and trumpets that are sounded all over the world, I believe are signs that God is showing to us now. What will eventually come to pass when the great trumpet is blown before the rapture takes place? Thank you. One of the things he's shown me in that is pretty basic, but all of creation is groaning under the weight of generations of sin and awaiting the coming forth of mature sons. Uh, that's what God's been speaking to me in that bit. But also, uh, if we look at the physics or the science of this, I mean, the, the shift in the earth, the magnetic shift in the tectonic place, things that are happening again really speaks to me that the creation is groaning it's had enough so that's part of what he showed me <laughs> just about I'm sure a lot of people want we know about the blood moons and what it's just you know they the ones that just came to pass and what did what did that represent to you and the ones that are coming that are there's still more blood moons coming for next year I didn't quite hear clearly yeah. what you said, you know. talking about the blood moons. Oh, the blood moon. Ah, uh, I have no idea about the blood moon. Maybe our oh, brother that. can explain something about no, blood moon. Brother Mark Biltz wrote a good book on that. Yeah. I, really. Um, there's a brother back there, Reshma. He, he's got a question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at the back, our, okay. our Jewish brother. That's for you. Hi. You heard that? <laughs> uh, we hear of near-death experiences and, and then yourselves, visions and things like that in heaven. Are there any stories of Catholics dying, coming back, where they have an experience with Mary, where she's very prominent as the Roman Catholic Church teaches, is... Mary, in your experience, is pretty much just another person in heaven, or is she at all in a, a prominent role as some teach? You are a Catholic, no? No. Didn't you say you were? No, my dad was. Ah, so this is your family question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I knew a brother. I won't share his name. That. An, a, uh, an experience in the heavenly realm came upon Mary, the mother of Jesus. And when he went up and greeted her, she began to weep. And she said, I am not a God. I am not to be prayed to. I am nothing but the handmaiden of the Lord. And they had, they've got to stop doing this because her heart, her heart was broken. Again, as he's beginning to research and write, that comes out of uh, ancient Babylonic practices and, and you know, ISIS and this, this whole thing. That was never a part of the true church until 325 when uh, Constantine, who was a sun worshiper, 
and worshipped Jupiter and worshipped all of these false gods wanted to make one religion so he began to put them together and that's where the worship of Mary and later all, all these other practices came from so I have heard testimonies but not of death and coming back not near death experiences of Catholics but Catholics in in ecstasy or in trance have had those type of experiences but but um, you, you know the devil does that all the time I would ask our brother that was here yesterday when he was in witchcraft so if we don't adhere to the word we can we can go astray nowhere in there does it ever say to worship Mary ever anywhere and so that's a dangerous place and now, now let me say this too I for my my understanding and, and having been graced to travel some of the places I have most of those I have found in the Catholic Church are truly seeking God I mean there, there's a they want they want it they want to connect and and I've I've ministered to and with Catholic priests and and bishops and cardinals that that really were hungry for God and they accepted Jesus so at that point it's not up to me to direct them how to comport themselves but we've got to understand every, I mean there are Muslims that are hungry for the reality of a living God every, everything out there so but I, to me the most compelling uh, thing I had heard is that brother that had had that experience in heaven and she was weeping because it's apostasy okay what thank you um, we have people uh, looking I mean, watching online so this is a question from a web streamer oh, okay can brother Sadhu speak about the vow needed to be made before one enters into ministry brother Vincent spoke of this recently the vow Vincent vow. Sukar well if brother Vincent spoke about the vow they should ask him that question you know? <laughs> there you go <laughs> I do not know exactly what uh, respected prophet Vincent Selva Kumar is a dear friend of mine. I don't, I don't know what the message he preached about making a vow before the ministry. So I'm not the right person to answer the question since he is the one who preached that message. Thank you. Uh, can you clarify the timing of the book of Job? I have heard that that is uh, a book on a creation before Adam uh, fell more than the after and especially not applicable toward the New Testament in the timing of we know timing. The Bible tells us very clearly that Adam was the first born created being of God. So if the book of Job was written before Adam, then Job becomes, Job and his friends and the many people who lived during that time seems to be made before Adam. So that doesn't seem to add on. But what I do know is Job lived much more earlier before that period of time where the book was written. That I don't know, but I do not know whether he was before Adam or not. No, they, um, from what I've studied, they, they say the earliest manuscript was possibly the book of Job, but that does not mean it was before Adam was on the earth. That just means it was a document that was written the earliest document that was written, written that became the canon of strict scripture. And that might be what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I'd like to take a question from this side. Any question over here? Okay, young man. How did the question from Webster McKay? Hey, Bruce, um, you said something about the veil being very thin on the third day, I think the first night. Could you give any like specific scriptures on that? Can it give you specific? I've got a whole book full of them. Um, 
it, it's, it's prophetic revelation based upon what God has shown me and, and some of the experiences I've had. And, and the scriptures, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, Second Peter 3, 8, a thousand years as a day. Uh, and God speaks at the end of the age how the glory of the latter house increases and supersedes that of the former. Brother Sadhu talked about that. So the, the part of the implication of that at the end of the age is, is as glory increases, the, the, the separation that kept us from one dimension to another is getting less and less. But it has to do also with the fact, Isaiah 46.10, as it was in the beginning, so it should be at the end. Adam and Eve had a face-to-face -face walk with God every day. They traversed dimensional barriers. And as I said, a lot of the ancient writings teach that Eden was actually, the Garden of Eden was a place in time or outside of time, excuse me, as we know time. So it was a spiritual realm that was connected to the natural realm and they could go back and forth. And so the fact that we as people are coming to the end of the age, these things, you got to go back to the beginning, you got to look at first mention, you've got to look at a lot of these things to really begin to understand some of the passages in the New Testament, specifically in the book of Revelation, that are explaining to us the fullness of time we've entered into and what's about to take place and what is taking place. And so the coining of that phrase, a thin place, came from uh, Northern Ireland. And it came from Bangor, I believe it was, where the Celtic Christians had a prayer meeting. Wasn't it 120 years? 300 years. See, I'm half that. For over 300 years, 24-7, 365, nonstop. And it, you know, the worship we had in here tonight was the minute taste of something like that. Just, just picture that going on for weeks and months and years, how, how the presence of God would so invade that that, that it was tangible. So the thin place is when you develop in that realm and in that place with God that it's, it's not, you're not battling to enter into the spirit, you're there. It's just a thin place. It's, it's so easy because everything about us is coming to the place of maturity and God's glory is, is bringing us in the fullness of time. And that's, that's a real nutshell. And that's, but, but I mean, we can go over scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. But we are so close to the breakthrough that your hearts have been yearning for. I mean, God put that in you. You didn't come up with that someday and think, that's a good idea. No, God placed that, that, that longing in your heart because of the season we're in and the access we have and the door that's been open. And yeah, so press in. Okay, thank you. We are going to take three more questions and then we'll be done for the three night. Three more questions. All for Sadhu, I bet. <laughs> I had a question about um, helping our children to walk in these things. I have teenagers and um, they've actually specifically they've been, you know, rebel had a rebellious season. And so um, just... God is doing things in their lives and they are beginning, my daughter specifically is 17 and she's beginning to pray on her own and uh, read her Bible and walk back and forth in her room and pray and I've been released going in there and praying over her when, I, when she's not home, going in and laying on the bed and just releasing. But my question is, how can we help our kids to 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 go out of the dryness that they've maybe learned into the fullness. It's for you, you know, you're a father. <laughs> so are you. You're a spiritual father. The best way is to model it for them. You see, part of being a parent is you model true intimacy with Christ. And you provoke them to jealousy. That's almost scriptural but then the second thing you're already doing pray over them and then the third thing is you trust God because his word is true and he gave you a promise Acts 16 31 if you believe and are saved so shall your household so we we receive that by saying father I thank you I'm not seeing 
the rebellion, I'm seeing the end. I'm seeing the finished work. I see the destiny fulfilled. I see it. And, and so that's, that's the parent's job. That's what we're supposed to do. Pray, undergird them with prayer. Give them the example. Decree the word of God over their lives and the promises specifically for our children and watch what God can do. Thank you. Okay. This might sound like a silly question, but I love the color orange as a child. It was my favorite color. And I just wonder if there's a... Uh, significance spiritually about the orange that you wear and the orange up there on the <laughs> platform? <laughs> well, it's not a silly question, but unnecessary question. Yes. Well, uh, this color <coughs> is sadhu. Sadhu is a call. In the Sanskrit language, sadhu means a so holy man. So they, and, uh, they, they don't get married. They don't have a family, they don't have a home, they're like a vagabond. So like in the Catholic Church, they have something called the monks, something like that. So they give their lives over to prayer, meditation, and the preaching of the word. So, and they wear a rope like this, with this saffron color. So this signifies a life separated unto God. So if you like this color, you, can, you want to dye your hair? Is that what you said? <coughs> no, right? Actually, he thought it was red. He's colorblind. Um, my, my question to you, you guys is, um, the worship over the years has changed. You know, there was, there was a sound in the 80s. There was a sound in the 90s. You know, there was a sound of worship. And worship has kept changing, but it has kept evolving until the sound that there is over the last two or three years. You know, where a lot of times the music is stopping and the body is worshiping in waves. And my question is, I don't know if you have ever heard the sound of heaven, but if you have, how close is the worship on earth compared to the worship in heaven? That's a mystery. Now, actually, that's another sign of the thin place. We're learning to hear the realm of the Spirit. We're, we're hungering after God. That's grace that God put it for the, for the deeper things. You can't go deeper in God without that frequency beginning to resonate within you. And... I'll tell you one experience I had some years ago. You know this story. When I was in a service in Boston, Massachusetts, in an, one of the oldest churches in America, where Benjamin Frank, all these guys used to stand and orate, and they just could not break through in, in worship. I mean, it was like throwing a rock against a brick wall. And we went for over an hour. I mean, just going. And the pastor came out and said, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on. What do we do? Well, the only thing I've got to say in that is don't quit keep going if the devil's fighting that hard God wants to do something so as we're pressing into that I, of course you take authority you do what you know to do but I was standing there meditating saying father what are you saying now I'm not given to just foolish movement you know I, all of a sudden something came upon me and my body began to move it was really different I, I'm thinking, okay, that's different. What's going on? When I asked that, immediately my eyes were open. The wall disappeared in the front of the church, and I saw the throne of God. I saw millions upon millions of people on the sea of glass before the throne of God, and the, the river of God coming out from under began to fall in the room. Breakthrough came. And as I watched people, uh, these throng, these millions and millions of people worshiping God, I was fascinated to see, you know, you've got, you, when you put a choir together, you have the different sections for the altos, the baritones, the people would rise in the air on the sea. Of, I mean, it was, 
it was alive and it was dynamic and it was moving and and they weren't opening their mouth but the symphony was extraordinary and I said what is that and all of a sudden I noticed there was a, a sound coming out of my innermost being and joining this symphony and I'm watching this and I'm astonished and I began to understand about frequencies and you know light has a frequency anyway and this sound this frequency you could physically see it too went right into the heart of the father and then he began to release a sound back over his people and boy you've there's no words to describe this and afterwards I said Lord what was that he said you've read in your scripture how I inhabit the praises of my people he said but I'll take you deeper I inhabit my people who are praise and so I th from my understanding they were coming into the season of alignment in the spirit with the the kingdom of heaven that's causing us to innately I mean th this thing is beginning to, to come forth in the church be because at the end of the age there's got to be a new sound that coincides with with the coming out from the Babylonian system which is being separate from the the things we know in the world especially the sound of the world that's being pushed around the world so that's been my understanding and you with your heart of passion for worship you're, you're, you're tapping into that because as he's been saying and we've all said passion is the birthplace of intimacy and revelation and everything the kingdom has passion for God and God put a passion for worship in you that's why he's using you in this how to bring forth that new sound your turn I think he asked was if we had seen worship in heaven yeah I just told you, him you myself. just told yeah. I've never had that uh, grace yet amen thank you <laughs> Praise God. That will be the end of our question and answers. And okay. I just want to thank all, the, all of you for being respectful. I'm sure all of your questions didn't get answered, but um, as you listen to more of the teachings and, and uh, studying the Word, God will answer it for you. But thank you so much for your cooperation. Brother Seda, would you close us in prayer? Sure. Thank you. Shall we all stand up for a word of prayer? Let's lift up our hearts before our gracious God for all the wonderful things He has done for us during this conference. Call to remembrance the various blessings you have received from the first day till this day. In moments like we sing out a song We sing out a love song to Jesus In moments like this We lift up our hands we lift up our hands to the Lord Singing, I love you, Lord Singing, I love you, Lord Singing, I love you, Lord, I love you. Holy Father, we thank you for your great goodness, for your great grace, for your great mercy. For the great and wonderful things you did for us 
for each one of us all throughout this conference. Lord, we lift up our dear brother Bruce Allen and his dear wife Reshma Allen before your presence right now. Thank you, Holy Father, for, get, for calling them to serve you as man and wife. Thank you, Lord, for yoking them together as one flesh. Thank you for your grace that is upon your dear son, Ellen, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful gifting and call that's upon him. Lord, you have spoken many wonderful words for him during this conference. And we know, Lord, you have prepared him even before the foundation of the world. You have predestined him to do great works for you. And we thank you that you have set him apart, call him apart, even from his mother's womb, to be a prophet unto you, Lord. To prepare the way of the Lord, like how Enoch had prepared the way. I thank you for preparing him, Lord. Preparing his inner man. Preparing his spirit, his soul and his body. To experience great things from you, Lord. And thereby to prepare a people who will be part of the Elijah company, Lord. To prepare them to do great works, Lord. Thank you, Holy Father. Even during this conference, you have begun to enlarge his spirit and depositing him, inside him, many, many precious truths from your throne. Lord, I thank you for your dear daughter, Reshma, Lord. Lord, born far away from this land, but you had prepared her even from her mother's womb, Lord. Even without her mother knowing, you had fashioned Reshma in her mother's womb. When you breathe your spirit into that ovule, you send that spirit, Lord, with your thought, with your ways. When you fashion her bones, her flesh, her muscles, her sinews. When you wrote her DNA, you encoded in it what she is today, married to this white man, were all written even before the foundation of the world. But even now, you have put in her holy desires to have an angelic anointing, Lord. Lord, deep down in her heart, she has been praying this prayer before you every day. She said like this, Lord, you have blessed my husband to be translated, to be taken from place to place. Lord, I want the wings of an angel so that I can mount up before your throne like Mary, who sat at your feet and learned from you, I want to be translated before your throne to see you face to face, to sit at your feet and to put my face at your feet and just cry my heart out for the wonderful things you have done in my life. And she also desires this Lord sitting there at your feet. Lord, I want to just gaze into your face like what Mary did. Lord, I don't want to ask you to be famous, to have a big ministry like my husband, but to just gaze into your glory, to do what your heart desires. For that she prays, Lord, 
that she may have like the angel's anointing who can come before you all the time who can be at your presence and who can also gaze into your face thank you wonderful jesus my dear sister the lord jesus christ is standing before you and he tells me he is going to answer your prayer more than what you have asked or think he is going to be like a father to you deep down in your heart you have always yearned for a father's love he is going to be more than a father to you each time you pray he will come and hug you close to his bosom and let you taste and see a father's love and you will no more consider yourself an orphan no more that thought is plucked from the depth of your heart right now no more fatherless no more orphan and you are no more barren because today you are hepsiba you are bula <laughs> no more barren no more cast away you are well favored of the lord thank you wonderful jesus thank you wonderful jesus and i see the lord jesus christ my dear sister giving you a scepter in your right hand that is a scepter that was given to esther to always come before his presence that too has been one of your desire so when you kneel down to pray you will always come before his presence to ask him to talk with him and whatever you ask as king agasaras told esther whatever you ask i will give you to the half of my kingdom so likewise the lord jesus will grant the desires of your heart you shall also my dear sister the lord jesus says you shall also become a mother of many many children mother of many many children may not be from your natural womb but from the heart of your womb will be born many many children not only from one nation but from many many nations thank you wonderful jesus lord jesus now i ask you because you are standing before your daughter and speaking all these words let her know beyond all shadow of doubt that you have spoken these words now i pray let your anointing fall all over her right now let it flow from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet a tangible a tangible mighty anointing that she has never experienced before let it flow all over her right now right now lord let the tangibly feel it let the tangibly feel it burning in her hand flowing all over her lord all over her all over her like she has never experienced before in her life because you are standing before her before because you are speaking to her let it flow let it flow mightily all over her lord all over the fire of your glory from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet the fire of your glory the rivers of living waters let her experience both of it lord the fire and the waters flowing all over her let the eyes of her understanding be enlightened right now let the heart of a womb be impregnated right now with many 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 children of glory to come 
thank you wonderful lord jesus thank you lord give for the anointing just like you gave to sarah lord when you said she will be a mother to nations not just mother to nations lord but mother to a prophetic generation that's going to be born thank you wonderful lord jesus thank you and also i pray give her the healing anointing to pray for healing to broken hearted women and for barren women thank you wonderful lord jesus thank you wonderful lord jesus thank you embrace your dear daughter lord with your fatherly love now that i pray lord let that third anointing now come upon her that anointing of a father's love for his dear daughter let it flood her heart right now right now let it flood her heart never is she ever going to say i miss my father's love never because from this day you are replacing a heart with your fatherly love thank you father thank you lord jesus thank you come and let us lift up our holy hands and bless the name of the living god who lives forever and ever thank you father come and open your mouth and give thanks to god give thanks to the good god give thanks to the wonderful god Give thanks to the gracious God. Give thanks because he's good. His grace and mercy endures forever and ever. Father, now I pray. Stretch forth your blessing hands upon every one of your dear children, Lord. Every one of your dear sons, every one of your dear daughters, even all those who are watching through web stream lot all those who are watching through online now i pray stretch out your blessing hands upon every one of them lot i pray that they will grow in the spirit they will grow in spiritual stature that they will grow in wisdom and understanding and they will be transformed from glory to glory after the image of the lord jesus christ father i pray keep them from all evil and withhold no good thing from them lord till you come again in glory i pray you will watch over them provide for all their needs lord thank you father in jesus name we give you all the glory all the honor forever and ever you are god amen